Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to that fastest 30 minutes in broadcast. I take it we're towards the weekend here, and um, we're going to get started. Back in the book of Haggai, just coming off Revelation, and um, making sure that we kind of get back to where we made mention of Haggai the other night, and I never could get back to it. And, you know, I was talking about Revelation and Haggai. We're going to go there tonight. Haggai. Chapter number two, two, where the glory of God fills the temple. Okay? But in verse number three, Haggai chapter number two, who is left among you that saw this house in a first glory? Talked about that the other night. And how do you see it now? How are they looking at you now? Well, we talked about it. Is it not in the eyes, in your eyes, in comparison of it as nothing? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? No. What? What I have now is, is nothing what I, compared to what I used to have. Uh, you're 25 years old, lady. You're in the flower of your age. Look at that glory and that beauty that's on you. Come on here, 21. Hello, 30. Excuse me. Knock, knock. Who's there? 90. Ninety who? Ninety with the wrinkles? No. How many 25-year-old men do you see chasing a 90-year-old wrinkly woman down the road? If she do, it's because she got $2. It don't happen, do it? Now take that woman back to make her 25 years old. That man be done married her. He wouldn't have to chase her. See how it goes. Same thing with you old men. Big rusty 80 year old out there looking at that 25 year old girl. Tell me you sure is a pudding little old thing ain't you? Ain't that a pudding little old thing? You big rusty alligator. I, I don't. Hold me. I cannot get on this right here. They vex me so bad, these big rusky, husky mug. Need to sit their big gorilla cane. They took so fat they can't even wipe their butt. They, they, they got to get a hand extension to reach the hind end. Speak now to, where am I at? at verse, verse number, th how do you see, what do you like now? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel. Save the Lord and be strong, O Joshua, uh, Joshua and Yasadak. I, I, I kind of broke in on this the other day, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land. Verse number four, save the Lord and work and work and work. For I am the Lord, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, I kind of stopped off there last time in one of the other segments, maybe Wednesday or something. According to the word that I covenant with you. Look at what God is saying, work. I am with you. Why? Because I made a promise to your ancestors, to your forefathers. God, do y'all do you know how many ancestors prayed for us to be where we are today? I think about my daddy telling me about Uncle Bish that was blind and how he prayed and how he died praying. You know, I think about my grandfather, Wilbur Mathis, Actually, I am a Mathis, y'all, not a Johnson. I should be Prophet Mathis. But actually, Manning is what I really am, Manning. That's mother's side, daddy's side, Mathis. So it would be a Mathis, Man, it would be a Manning, it would be a Math, Manning Mathis. That's where, that's where I'm supposed to be Eminem, Manning Mathis. But my point is this, is that they shared with us about the ancestors, how they prayed, you know, uh, my grandmama, great-great-grandmama, Roberta Piggies, 
Pegasus, Pegasus, if you want to be proper with it, Pegasus, Pegasus, how they pray. And you're looking at this history stuff. And God is saying, that's why you're here. Why? Because are you not praying for your children and for your grandchildren and asking God to keep them and raise them up and bless them when, they, when you die? Of course you are. I do. All the time. A lot of night goes by that I don't pray. Not a day. I'm always reminding God, either of my children or of a child, you know. And some of us have to pray more for one child. They don't have to pray none for the others, you know. And uh, why pray for a child when you can give the child everything? So plain and simple, I didn't have to really pray for my children to get anything because why pray for what you can give them? So when the prayer is over and they don't no longer have you, they no longer have the blessing. And they don't understand that when they lose the head of the house, they lose the blessing. When they lose that man, they lose the blessing. Y'all need to remember that, okay? You women, okay, especially that want to get rid of a good man. You ain't going to do them a curse your blessing. And God going to give you that dog you want now. Because all women like a good dog. Y'all know y'all love a good dog. Tell the truth, women. You know you like a dog. Tell the truth now. Y'all love a dog. <laughs> I know some women that got some dogs, and they would not leave them dogs for nothing. No good dogs, too. No good dogs, too. But that's their family. That's the way their family is. The women won't leave the men um, on that family side, but the, but the, the women who want another man, they'll leave them. But... The other women in laws, they won't leave them men. Now, here it goes. And that's the truth, y'all. I'm just telling you straight up. That's just the way life goes. <coughs> Excuse me. Call it like we see it and keep on trucking. I'm not here. Listen, I'm not here to be spiritually correct to you. All right? I don't care about what people say no more about me with the gospel no more. I'm the truth teller. I tell the truth about life. And I'm going to continue to tell the truth. I am the truth teller. That's what God called me. That's what others called me. The truth teller. He gave me that. He said, you're going to be the truth teller. I said, what do you mean? He said, because you're going to say what others won't say. You're going to tell them the truth about their pimps, their pastors, which ain't nothing but a bunch of whores in the church. Prostitutes. Y'all still running after prophets and apostles talking about give me a word from the Lord. Y'all crazy. I wish I could get to y'all. I wish I could get back to them. I wish I could get to y'all one more time to tell y'all that they ain't nothing. I'm going to tell you, don't give your money to them. Don't give them nothing. Oh, no, I don't want your money. I'm just going to make sure they don't get it either because they're liars. They're liars. Okay? That's what they are. They're money-grubbing liars. I took care of them prostitutes. I took care of them, them pimps apostles. I know them. I know them. I had one of the baddest pimps it was. You know, I was, I was a whore off Wall Street. Tell it like it is and keep on rolling. Let me go ahead and tell it. According to, yes, yeah, that's right. According to the word that I covenanted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so God made a promise, a covenant word with you, so my spirit remained among you. Fear ye not. See, the enemy has brought the spirit of fear. That's why y'all better be careful. Listen to these broadcasters that scaring the hell out of y'all, but not the real hell, but scaring y'all in the hell. People telling y'all every time you turn around, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. Y'all better get away from them crazy folks. Get away from them. Them folks are cursing y'all. Cursing y'all. You know how many people don't commit adultery that's still alive today? You know how many people that have committed fornication that's still alive today? You know how many people that have stole, lied, cheating, stealing? You know how many people that did that? You know how many people that kill people still alive today? God haven't killed those people yet, have he? Hello? Hello? All them police would be dead, wouldn't they? Did God kill them? 
Did God kill the folks that did all the raping? Did God kill them? No, they still alive. Did God kill the folks that hung them people while the little white girl was sitting up smiling and saying, yeah, man, daddy, look at them hanging that nigga. Ain't he dead yet? They still alive? God didn't kill them, but you want to listen to a Christian broadcast that going to scare you and tell you that God going to kill you because of what you're doing, right? Oh, he going to kill you, but he didn't kill nobody else. So why God got to kill me? Why me? That's witchcraft. Y'all are under spiritual witchcraft from TikTok, and you don't even know it. Y'all listen to witches and warlocks that's condemning y'all soul to hell, but they won't go kill that congressman. You see what I'm talking about? Oh, shut up. Just be quiet. Stop lying. Get your religion and all that hell you got, the hell out of here. But they kill y'all. You see, because you're religious. Because you're scared to go to hell. Because you say, ha, sanctified, ha, got a mighty burning, ha, ha, fire, ha. Gonna run on, see what the end gonna be. I know it. They done scared y'all to hell. Y'all crazy. But they don't want nobody to judge them. My job is to send you to hell. You going to hell for adultery. You going to hell for drinking. You going to hell. See, I'm naming your sin and sending you to hell. See, I'm sending you to hell now, right? But I don't want you to send me to hell. Remember, I'm living holy. Hit me with your best shot. What am I going to hell for? You can't say that I'm sinning like you. You're going to hell for your pride, for your self-righteousness, for your tearing down and killing everybody. Honest with you, y'all, God is not studying about taking none of y'all to hell. None of you. God's not worried about that. God is doing everything in his power. Holy Spirit, help. Help me, Lord. Help me. The Father is doing everything to get us in. He's doing everything to get us in, y'all. Everything. He's delaying the time. He's sending people like me. He got people that love you. God is merciful every day that goes by. He's saying, turn, look, the signs are coming. And, and even if it wasn't for the Lord, the enemy would deceive the very elect. I'm looking for deception. I'm looking for deception, y'all. So I can say it's a lie. To me, everything is a lie. Everything is a lie now but the word of God. I don't believe none of them on television. I don't believe none of them. They fake. They, they liars. They thieves. They're hypocrites. They're, they ain't no good. And you feed their programs. And they don't give a dime here. Not one dime. Now think about the simple folks that we have. That, that just simple people just such as somebody like Brunel. If won't nobody else do nothing, she won't quit. Just somebody simple that say, here, here's an offering, here's a tithe. And whatever the case may be, everybody else quit, sister. They'll go, but they'll quit. If they don't hear from me, if they don't see me, if they can't talk to me, they don't want to give nothing. To hell with them. I don't need them. I don't need none of them. I don't want them in my life. I don't need them in my life. Don't you ever preach them. Have people in your life because they give money to your ministry. No. Let them go. I don't ever want them to give another dime or send another dime. Why? Because my relationship with them is not going to be predicated upon their offerings. Because evidently they're giving it to me and not God. So they'll stop giving it to ministry. And when I tell you that people don't give nothing, people don't see nothing, 
Y'all don't believe me? You don't have to. Ask God. And God going to tell you, did you say anything? Lord, no. Now you see he's telling the truth, don't you? Friday the weekend is here. According to the word that I covenant with in Haggai, chapter number 2, verse number 5, with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remained among you. Fear you not, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens. Do you see it in a little while? Yes, once it is, I will shake the heaven and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations. <laughs> it better seem like we got some thunder out there. It's lightning and thunder getting ready to come back in, man. Boy, we got to finish up the broadcast. We got to get out of here before we get caught in this rain. Here it is. Lord Jesus. Y'all, we done got flooded in the south. For those of you that don't know, it has been flooded down here. We needed the sunshine on this week for me to get back out, for Minnesota to get back out. Vehicles have been stuck in certain places. Some people's houses got flooded. One lady had to leave a job. All kind of stuff. But all is well. The water is receding. And God is good, y'all. That's all I can tell you. And, um, and God is good. And we got people that don't even know what's going on down here. That's up in the city. And I will shake all nations. Look at this. And the desire of all nations shall come. Do you hear me? I'm going to shake all nations. The desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. So there's something God's going to do in the spirit, just wake up the nation. And the desire of all the nations to come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord. Why? Because what do you see in this house now? What happened to the glory that was here? We need the glory of God back in our lives, saints. Brothers and sisters, if y'all find real serving Christians speaking in tongues, fasting, praying, seeking God, living holy, if you find a holiness church, not because it's named Pentecostal Holiness Church or Baptist Holiness or whatever, if you find a real holiness, man, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get it. Holiness unto the Lord. All type of denomination. First Church of Jesus Christ. First Church of Christ. Y'all are so done for. God is saying to me, tell my people that I'm not looking for the church building as in the place to be holy. I said to be you holy for I am holy, which means to separate be unspotted from the world to live a clean life before God. It's not hard. In other words, make it simple. Write down holy and write by it say, just live right. If you can find a church full of people that just want to be holy or just want to live right, y'all let me know. Because God let me know that if, if he decided to do something with me again, that's what it's going to be. I don't want the same Christians that I'm talking to now. I don't want them coming. They can go somewhere else. Because you can't clean them up. They stanking Baptists and Pentecostals and Methodists. They're some, they some stanking Christians. They got too much rust on them. I need some old dirty Christians that we can clean up to live holy. Y'all can have these sophisticated, high-tech AI Christians. These analog Christians, y'all can have the analog Christians, whatever these folks is. Y'all can have them, the Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostals. Y'all can have them folks. I want some old dirty brothers and sisters that come off the street, off drugs, methamphetamine, crack, cocaine. I want some dirty, stinking old Christians that we can clean up real good. Not sophisticated Hollywood Church of God in Christ uh, sprinkling uh, sprinkles up on the cake. And, and all that, and Baptists, all y'all. I don't want none. Y'all, y'all keep them. Y'all, y'all keep them. Y'all, y'all, y'all pretty. Y'all keep them. 
The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. If God say the silver and gold is his, I don't understand it. Y'all, material things. Y'all so in trouble. Y'all are so in trouble with this uh, silver and gold stuff. Prophet Johnson, just because it don't mean nothing, you don't. Folks, I know something. And I'm trying to tell y'all what I know. I know it means nothing. Because I've seen it already. Oh, God, Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> Ooh, glory. They, I got to remember that they are stuck in a body on earth. And that we're in trouble, God. Lord, I'm so, help me, Jesus. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. That's what I'm after. That's what I'm after. I'm after to rebuild the glory of this body and this shell with the presence and the spirit of God in these last days than it was in the earlier days when I was a young whippersnapper, you know, some of y'all just a whippersnapper, and some of y'all just a top water. You know, some of y'all ain't graduated to a top water yet. You're just a whippersnapper. You got to go from a whippersnapper, and you got to graduate to a top water. Y'all ain't a top water yet. <laughs> you got to go fishing in order to know what that means. So if you haven't been fishing, then you don't know what that means. But everybody that's been fishing know what whippersnapper and top water mean, Okay. Well, Prophet Johnson, we don't know what it means. Can you just tell us? Hold me. A whippersnapper is a learner. That's one of them young fellas think they know everything. One of them young girls think they know everything, snapping everything. Yes, can't tell them nothing and everything else. Yes. They just a whippersnapper. They just in the learning process. They whippersnappers. You got grown whippersnappers. A top water is when they graduate from a whippersnapper and they get a little bit of sense. You ever caught a little bit of fish out the water, <laughs> you know, about two inches long? Dinky, dinky, wonderful little dinky, like my daughter Angel used to say, I hate that they take her fishing because every fish we caught, she fished for the smallest fish it was. She never tried to catch the big fish. She would try to catch the smallest fish in the water and she'd pull it up in single songs and dinky, dinky, a wonderful little dinky, and i get so mad. Well, there's a top water. <laughs> you understand? You're just a deacon. You graduated from a whippersnapper, now you're to a top water. Well, what comes out the top water, Prophet Johnson? Oh, you don't want to know what comes out the top water. I'll tell you about that in another lesson. Okay? That's another series there. Here it goes. The glory of this letter. You just want to get to a top water, okay? <laughs> Even if God get to a top water. Don't be a whippersnapper all your life. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. So God is trying to build back better. Get it? By it in America, we're going to build back better. And in this place will I give peace. What? In this place will I give peace. Where? The glory of the latter house. Behold, all things have become new. How many of you would like to have peace that surpasses all understanding? That's what I have. That's what you've got to get. I got peace, but I want more peace. I want more. Saith the Lord of hosts, in the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, and in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, watch this, if one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his flesh do touch bread, or pottage, or wine, or oil, or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, no. <laughs> you know, you bear holy flesh in your skirt, now you're going to go and touch it. Then said Haggai, if anyone that is unclean, Anyone that is unclean, by a dead body, touch any of these? Whoa. Shall it be unclean? 
And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. Minister, where you at, man? Then Haggai answered and said, so is this people. And so is this nation before me, saith the Lord. And so is every work of their hands. And that which they offer, there is unclean. God said, you're touching everything, trying to clean it up, but you're still dirty. <coughs> Excuse me, that's, that's the way it goes in life, folks. Let me ask you something. Have you ever read the ingredients on the bar of soap? <laughs> Wait a minute. Try reading it. A bar of soap, something that is supposed to clean you up, got more hydroxyglycerin in it than anything. More Pamela Fisamine, uh, 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 whatever them words is, calaline, is, folks, a bar of soap, read the ingredients. I know you never thought about it. You never thought about it. I know you did. You're using poison to wash your body. What happened to the good old lye soap that we made back in the day in school? High school. Y'all know we made soap in high school, children. Did y'all know that? Lie soap. The soap that don't tell a lie. It may dry up your skin, but guess what? It's going to clean you up. Well, no such thing as a bubble bath. You understand? Only bubble bath, we have a dishwashing liquid. And it better not be no joy because it was going to fade out, and that's all we had was the cheapest kind. Ultra. That's the cheapest dishwashing liquid in the world, ultra. Minister, I'm closing here. Let me get to it. You got to use poison to clean your body. In closing, he said this. And now I pray you consider from this day and upward, verse number 15. From before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord, my God, we got a storm breaking out, y'all. We got to get out of here. I'm, I'm rushing, y'all, because we got a storm coming in. And the prophet just said, you're going to do the word of the Lord. You don't worry about no storm. Shut up. God going to protect you. God going to take you. I'm closing, man. So here it is. Since those days when one came to a heap, I'm just going to read the finished minister. To a heap of 20 measures, there were but 10. God said, you're going to look for much, but you ain't going to have enough. When one came to the wine vat, wine vat for to draw out 50 vessels out of the press, there were but 20. See how, see how life is going to short you? I smote you with blasting and with mildew and with hell in all the labors of your hand. Yet you turn not to me, saith the Lord. God says, I sent hurricanes, floods, fires. I even sent a famine. But it didn't stop you. You still wouldn't turn to the Lord. Why? Because you're fat America in closing. In closing. Consider now, uh, from this day and upward, from the day and upward, forward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the, that's the 29th of September, 24th day of September, Lord, don't be talking that stuff, that's around my birthday up in there. Here it is, at least y'all don't know when it is. Here it is, the day of the foundation of the Lord temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? This is where the pimps got your money at. This is where your prostitutes came in with your prosperity message. Is the seed still in the barn? Huh? You got to sow your seed. Huh? Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Hypocrites and liars. They ate y'all alive. They ate me alive. I told you. I worked for the best prostituting apostles and prophets there ever was. And I didn't know that I was their first class whore. Their pimp. I didn't know it. I thought I was doing God's will by working the street corner for them hoish apostles. They just as hoish as they can be. Pimps for money. They didn't work. They weren't hoish for the women. 
They hoes for money. You get it? They money hoes. In closing, yeah, I call them. That's what they is. A money hoe. That apostle ain't nothing but a money hoe. I know what he is, and y'all know I know. And him and all his prophets, they prophet hoes. Tell them prophet Johnson, call them hoes. That's right. Tell them that, elders and evangelists, and tell them. Is the seed yet in the barn? And y'all know it's true, too. But that bitch ain't pimping y'all. As yet divine, because y'all ain't got nothing to give them. And the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not brought forth. From this day will I bless you. Do you see what God is saying? God is saying, is it still not in the barn? Do I not still have enough in the earth? From this day, I will bless you. Why are you waiting on your pimps? Why are you waiting on your prostitutes? You don't need them to prophesy to you. This is your prophecy right here. Read it for yourself. Y'all, we're going to get out of here. Be safe over the weekend. Storm is coming in. Minister and I got to hit the road. Run about 15, 20 miles to get back from the studio. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Y'all, I've got to go. And a prophetic anointing just hit me just now in closing. The only thing I can tell y'all is this right here. Sisters, get ready for y'all release like never before. In Jesus' name. That's to my sisters. Y'all getting ready to get a release from God. All the sisters. Brothers, I'll see y'all tomorrow night. Y'all have a good night. Love you too. I'll see you Sunday. Bye.